Jeanette DeCondi often visits family in San Diego. Today, she was heading home to Santa Barbara and found out the hard way that all train service was suspended between San Diego and Orange counties. And I do this often, and it's Santa Barbara to Solano Beach. And I do text alert, I do it online, and nobody alerted me. So my son's a surgeon, he goes off to the early OR, drops me off in the dark, and I should have gotten a 640 train, but it never showed up. Instead, a staff member directed DeCondi to the alternate services being provided to travelers. I'll take you to, um, where are we, Oceanside, and then you can catch a bus in four hours to go to um, Irvine, where you can then pick up the train, and I think that might be my bus. This is your bus. So, not happy. <laughs> DeCondi says she's glad the tracks are getting repaired, but her trip got delayed by almost six hours. And this will be the situation for another 30 to 45 days because of shifting in the coastal cliffs in San Clemente. Repairs to the tracks got approved in a California Transportation Commission meeting yesterday. Where we find ourselves today is uh, dealing with a set of issues that uh, uh, really have accelerated over the last month as it relates to, excuse me, the last two weeks as it related to the storm surge. And we have, as Paul indicated, uh, asked our board to take emergency actions. Daryl Johnson, the CEO of the Orange County Transportation Authority, said suspension to this busy corridor establishes an emergency. It is the second busiest passenger rail corridor in the country. The Department of Transportation and Caltrans have had a long-term investment in this corridor since 1976. And there's more than 70 freight trains per day in some areas and more than 150 passenger trains in the area. What is less well known is this is also a designated national defense rail corridor. Anchors will be placed into bedrock to help stabilize the ground movement in San Clemente. Train service is expected to reopen in November with construction continuing until next year. The estimated cost is approximately $12 million and the timeframes are subject to change. Tanya Thorne, KPBS News.